Guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and we are out on a brand new barn dominium. The men have just almost finished wiring it, and I just wanted to shoot some action shots and give you some tips for new construction wiring on the rough end. Because there's some things that you want to do to set yourself up for the win on the trim out. If you're new to the game, the rough end is the beginning part of the job before they do drywall. The trim out is after the fact and you want your trim out to be as easy as possible on you and there's some things that you can do to make your trim out even easier. We're going to walk around here and I'll jump back in randomly at different parts and we're going to look at some tips that you can do to make your trim out awesome that you can do on the rough end. Let's get to it. All right, so these are in no particular order. I didn't uh, wire this one, but our boys did a good job. And so this one is the perfect place to stop. We are in a bathroom. Now, the worst thing that uh, can happen to a bathroom is that the vanity light is not on center with the sink or not on center with what other, you know, amenities it's or what other uh, features it's trying to align with, whether it be the mirror or some other piece of equipment in the bathroom, this has to line up. It's super crucial. So what we do is we try to find where we think the center of the sink is off the plans or just what it looks like. And then we will take that vanity whip. So the switch is here. We'll take the vanity whip and we'll curl it up and we'll put it in the wall. Now this one's pretty obvious. It's going to be within that stud, but often I'll go to the stud before and the stud after and that way, I what we do is, is you the customer goes ahead, they put up the mirror, the whole nine yards, and the last person to come in is the electrician. And they will come in and they'll cut their hole in a perfect spot using a cut-in box and be able to reach in and grab that wire. And no matter what stud it's in, or if they do multiple ones, like I'll show you in another bathroom, if they do multiple ones, you'll be able to reach your wire with ease without having to line the box up now or count on a drywaller to poke the wire out. It never happens. Just don't do it. All right, the second thing you can do for yourself on a rough-in is to label the boxes. It's super important. This looks like a nice, neat, uh, clean box. I didn't make it up. It looks clean enough. And they've labeled it fan, light, vanity. Often in the back, it'll be labeled power. So definitely label your switches. The trim out should be the easiest part of the job. It should be a joy for you as an electrician or the homeowner. And you definitely want to label these things that you know that way when you set these switches out, you know exactly which ones to put. All right, so here in the kitchen, we're dealing with the disposal and the dishwasher. Now, obviously, there's no cabinetry here or anything, but we know that we want those receptacles to land underneath the sink. So what we will do, and usually I take this and roll it out, and before I leave here, I'll actually roll it out, and I'll tell the contractor or the homeowner that wire has to end up in that cabinet. Don't worry about cutting the box in perfectly, but the wire has to end up in the cabinet. If it ends up in the back of the wall, let the homeowner or the contractor know it's going to cause you all a lot of pain. So I just want that wire stubbed out. I don't want a cabinet guy cutting my boxes in. I want to cut my own boxes in, but just have them make sure that they stub that out inside the cabinet. Same thing here with this. This is an above range receptacle hood. We don't know where it's going to go. Just tell them to pull a tape on it, stub it out wherever they want it, and then you can deal with it later. All right, so moving on in the bedroom, this is probably the second to greatest tip I'm going to give you today is take pictures. Once you've roughed it in and you're done, take pictures of every single room. So boom, 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 just walk around the house taking a bunch of pictures. Almost every time, inevitably, a drywaller is going to cover up something, and that will give you the proof later. Now, there's lots of tricks of how to find a buried receptacle inside the wall that I can talk to you about later. But this is the best one, especially the drywaller. It's always, oh, there wasn't a receptacle there. Well, you've got your four foot level out and it's like a seesaw on the wall. And then you turn around and you've got a picture to prove it. There's no excuse at that point. So take a picture of the entire house, the ceilings, the floors, the walls, and everything in between. Now here's a good example of a double vanity and or a double vanity light. So normally I'd curl up a little bit more wire in that, but that's fine. But they put some over here where it's likely to be and they've looped up a big curl over there. So you would start typically from the switch box, say the switch box is this way from left to right, knowing that you could start here, find your wire, and then you should be able to go over and start there. And we just want them to cover that up so we can use cut in boxes later and cut it in. Another thing that we like to do is put our dryer in our washer at about 48 inches. It's so hard to get behind a dryer. Mine at my house is just dangerous. You're grounded the entire time and on tile and on the piece of equipment. You have to wiggle your body back there. We like to put our dryer in our washer up a little bit higher just to make it easier to use later. 
All right, guys, and this is the final tip for today. I'll try to do another one of these videos with some more tips, but this is the number one tip, and it's multi-layered. On this one, you never, under any circumstance, make up the panel on the rough end. For one, your breakers could get stolen. And when I say make up the panel, that means terminate all the grounds and neutrals, land all your breakers. With the expensive arc fault, ground fault breakers, then breakers tend to grow feet and walk off the job. So never install those breakers on the front end. Always install them later. Never make up a panel on the front end. And there's many reasons. It can your panel can get ruined. It can get they can get broken. Somebody could spray it. I can't tell you how many panels have been sprayed. But really the number one reason is is you don't well, it's kind of a two part. So the first part is you don't want someone to get hurt on the job. If you've landed all the breakers, you can get a Wahoo out here who will hook temporary power to it and try to power stuff up. And if you think it's not true, some of you guys can drop it down in the comments below. You'll get a, a Jake Leg electrician out here who's doing a little bit of plumbing or something and tries to back feed your already made up panel. And the second reason that you definitely don't want to do it is you don't want the job to be too complete on the tr on the rough end on the beginning and the reason is is that if you leave too much money on the table of a job or you make it too easy to do the trim out sometimes people don't call you back and a lot of times, you know, you've got a good little honey pot at the end of the job. You don't want to leave too much money left on the trim out. We can t make another video about how much to get on the rough end, how much to get on the trim out. But you definitely don't want it too easy for the customer. If the panel's already made up and all they got to do is put in some can light trims, there is a chance that they may not call you back at all to finish it. And then you would lose out on the second part of that job. You've got your name on the permit. And if you don't think it happens, then you haven't been in the game very long. People will, will intentionally not call you back on a trim out for that very reason. Oh man, I owe him $3,500 and there's about six hours worth of work here. Never leave too much money on the table. And at the same time, always you know set yourself up for safety when it comes to generators and stuff and people backfeeding them. So you don't want to get involved with that and you don't want, you know, if there's temporary power on site, you don't want somebody coming in here powering up your panel. Those are just a couple reasons that you do not want to do that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you a few tips on some things that you can do on the rough end to make your trim out easier, to make your job easier, and to make your life easier. You don't want to have too many things that have to be fiddled with on the trim out. You want it to all be pretty standard. And the biggest thing is, is whatever you do, do it consistently. Make sure that you're doing it consistently every single time. Cookie cutter, the same way. This is how we do bathrooms. This is how we do this. That way, no matter who goes to trim out the job, you know, you might have one crew roughing in and one crew trim it out. And if everybody does everything the same way, you will be consistent and it'll be easy on you. I am the electrical code coach. And my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.